Hey there, fellow investors. Today, we've got a question from a 79-year-old who's looking to boost the returns on their £300,000 portfolio for care costs. Let's dive in and see how we can help. Now, our friend here has been investing through an ISA, and they've seen a decline in the value of their portfolio since the end of last year. But don't worry, they're not alone. It's been a tough time for investors with inflation, the end of cheap money, and the cost of living crisis affecting everyone. Given our friend's relatively short investment time horizon and the need to fund their elderly care, we should focus on preserving capital, sourcing income, and spreading risk. But before we talk about boosting returns, let's consider if their financial plans can handle further portfolio losses. Care home costs are skyrocketing, and it's a major concern for many pensioners. Now, if our friend wants to recoup recent losses, we might need to rethink their portfolio. It's time to cut our losses and let our profits run. We can consider getting rid of the biggest losers in their portfolio, like HICL Infrastructure, BlackRock World Mining, and Croda International. Instead, we can focus on better income opportunities like Persimmon, Vodafone, and Legal and General, which have yields above 8%. Speaking of income, our friend is leaning heavily towards UK stocks. While that's understandable for income purposes, it's important to diversify geographically. We can consider adding exposure to the US and Europe to minimize risk. One option is the iShares Core MSCI World Usits ETF, which is heavily concentrated in US shares. And alongside that, we can look at FNC Investment Trust, which is wary of overpaying for American technology shares. Now, let's not forget about Asia. Despite recent challenges, there are growing reasons for optimism towards China. The authorities are implementing stimulus measures to boost growth, which could have a positive ripple effect across the region. So holding on to investments in Asia might be worth considering. Our friend's portfolio is mostly invested in equities, except for the Sequoia Economic Infrastructure Income Fund. To align with their goals, we can consider spreading more widely across asset classes and allocating more to bonds. Investment-grade bonds that pay out income in sterling could be a good option, like the Vanguard UK Investment Grade Bond Index or the Rathbone Ethical Bond. And if our friend wants to avoid the volatility of other parts of the bond market, they can also consider a money market fund like the Royal London Short-Term Money Market. This fund invests in high-quality bonds that are maturing soon and offers a stable income of around 4.5%. Now, keep in mind that these recommendations are based on the information provided and it's always a good idea to assess your risk profile and seek advice if needed. But with careful consideration, we can make some adjustments to our friend's portfolio and potentially boost their returns over the next five years. Remember, investing is a journey, and it's important to adapt and make changes along the way. So, take these suggestions into account, do your own research, and make informed decisions that align with your financial goals. That's it for today, folks. If you have any questions or want us to rate your portfolio, email us at money at telegraph.co.uk with the subject line rate my portfolio. And as always, happy investing!